Hello everybody, I have Shale with me today and we're going to be talking about the different kaleidoscope of options that are available when we take a look at business process automation. But before we dive into the questions that I have specifically for you, would you mind giving everybody a quick introduction? Emma, it's great to connect with you. Thank you for the opportunity. I am so excited that you're marching close to your 50th episode now. That's fantastic that you've been continuing to do uh, do these uh, uh, insights that you've been bringing uh, to, to a lot of listeners and, and watchers. I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, by way of introduction, you know, I've spent the last half decade in building the intelligent automation market, which comprises of RPA, AI, and multiple other uh, technologies. And as somewhat of a unicorn in the intelligent automation and digital transformation space, I've served as the CMO and chief customer officer for three leading automation firms helping shape this industry. I'm now looking at this market from a investor and analyst perspective as a executive in residence at a leading uh, venture firm in Silicon Valley and running a consulting business that helps organizations in their automation journey. I also run a very interesting customer group, an independent customer group called Vocal, which stands for Voice of the Customer in the Automation Landscape. And that now has 50 key decision makers uh, from various parts of the globe uh, participating in, the, in this group. So it's a very exciting time uh, to be in automation and a lot of exciting changes in the market as well. I'm excited to tap into some of those insights that are not only coming from your experience, but also that group and you know those executives that are sharing thoughts on this industry with you. Um, so one thing that we did getting ready for this interview is we opened it up to the group on LinkedIn that's engaged with these videos before, and I asked for suggestions for questions. So this is a little different. These aren't just questions from my mind coming to you. This is kind of crowdsourced in nature. So the questions that we're going through today are all based on or inspired by those comments and messages that I received. So to get started, you mentioned some of the experience that you've had in the past and really shaping this industry. And I'm having conversations with people around the world about digital transformation every day. And I always like to tap into what are some of the myths or misconceptions about automation and digital transformation that you've seen? There are several. I think the, the idea to crowdsource the questions for this particular session was fantastic. And I think if you crowdsource uh, the market, you'll find that there are many myths out there. Uh, you know, a common myth about RPA and automation in general is fueled by a fear of losing livelihoods that RPA will replace jobs. You know, a constant barrage of negative press uh, doesn't help, but RPA um, is not meant to replace human workforce, but rather to complement it or augment it, right? It's the human and robot interaction that is particularly exciting in terms of where the market is headed. I think another common myth, um, though subscribed by only a few RPA vendors, is that RPA can do for businesses what cloud did for IT. Uh, or, you know, along similar lines, I've, I've heard the notion that RPA is the next ERP. Um, you know, this systematic marketing push to, to make RPA the center of the universe and um, everything orbiting around it labeled as hyper automation is like having a very loose relationship with the truth. Uh, it's really comical in some ways. You know, RPA is a valuable technology. There's no doubt about that. And um, it has focused on for the longest time doing things cheaper and faster. Business resilience has become the lifeline in the quicksand of just focusing on cheap and fast, right? The imperative to digitally transform your organization is more important than ever before, particularly shaped by this pandemic. And RPA is one of the many tools in the sprawl of technologies that exist uh, in the automation uh, spectrum, right? I think, uh, convergence of automation with low code, no code solutions in the cloud with microservices is the next wave of hyper growth. And in my honest opinion, an RPA centric architecture will certainly not get you there. So those are some of the myths that I've seen and there are quite a few. 
Well, and I, I think we'll kind of play off this idea of RPA not being the center of automation or the end-all be-all solution. And I think that that's a really important thing to talk about because they do get a lot of hype and it is an exciting, powerful technology, but there's a whole lot that makes up this whole uh, automation landscape or as I mentioned earlier, kind of the idea of kaleidoscope of options. There are so many different things that play into this, this industry. Can you share a little bit about what other tools are making up this, this industry beyond just RPA? Sure. The, the promise of automation was to connect legacy and more modern systems uh, that don't talk to each other to connect them together. And this promise is getting diluted um, as the enterprise automation market has evolved to become a series of disparate technologies, right? Many of these technologies are not integrated and much like the monster in the movie, we now have a Frankenstein of tech uh, where the risk of integration and uh, automation as a whole falls on the customer themselves. And the metrics uh, to measure the success have moved from FTE reduction to derivative metrics. So some of the things that make up this automation kaleidoscope are you know, things like um, low code, no code, IBPM capabilities, uh, microservices, the integration of process mining, chatbots, AI, ML integration, uh, intelligent document processing as an example, all in one platform uh, to provide UI-based automation as well as API integration through one single solution. You know, this approach can significantly reduce the total cost of ownership and in fact, allow organizations to build hyper apps, which are essentially uh, allowing them to accelerate their innovation. So there are a collection of technologies that have to come together. It, it does require a different mindset and a different architecture, and it does have significant benefits from a low TCO, time to market, and accelerating innovation perspective. Wonderful. You mentioned this idea of derivative metrics while you were talking there. And I'm wondering if as the industry has evolved, if you, you know, if you have thoughts on how do we standardize those measurement of automation outcomes? So, you know, RPA versus your low code application, what does that look like from your perspective? Well, I, what I mean by derivative metrics are that they're, they're akin to if this, then that metrics, right? For example, um, you know, the metrics that don't have a plausible or direct connection to automation. So an example of that would be, you know, our um, customer effort score went up by five percentage points because our customer service uh, people are able to reduce their time searching for things on a call, which allows them to have more empathy because we have now trained them to do so because we have deployed X number of bots to do automation. That is a metric that gains, it, gains its value from various derivations or along the value chain, right? Um, I mentioned business resilience earlier and the, and the need for business resilience drives focus, impacts, spend, and also the definition of, of value. You know, value that is clearly aligned to the customer strategy uh, and is more important than ever before versus you know, pushing more bots or professing that citizen development is going to be the ultimate utopia uh, and nirvana, which is another interesting myth that's out there. Uh, you know, one of one of good way to measure an outcome of your automation program is to look at uh, automation value. And automation value is essentially looking at the incremental cash flow that's generated from your automation efforts divided by the number of processes that you're automating and the cost per process. You know, it's, if the ratio is greater than one, then you are certainly deriving, you know, positive value from your automation. Um, on average, an automated process could cost anywhere between 10 to $25,000, depending on uh, complexity, you know, including the license infrastructure, COE contribution, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I actually have a paper on automation value that you can find on LinkedIn, uh, you know, if people are interested in learning more about it. Wonderful. So I've got one last question for you that came from our group, and it kind of plays on all of this and a little bit of current events. 
I mean, you'd have to be living under a rock if you hadn't heard the term new normal. Or, um, you know, as we're living in this post-COVID world, how do you think that companies are going to benefit from automation and the technologies that we've been talking about? Well, COVID has certainly had a devastating effect on economies and society uh, as a whole. It has disrupted operating models within organizations and in my humble opinion, altered competitive dynamics. You know, how has it done that in, in two ways? You know, one is that it has shifted the rat race from, again, just focusing on cheaper and faster to focusing on value more strongly than ever before. You know, value as defined by the customer and their experience, not value as defined by the product vendor alone. Uh, two, you know, there is a incredible focus on business resilience that has uh, become a front and center priority. Uh, I would say that uh, it's not just resilience, but it's efficient business resilience. That's of critical uh, value to organizations today. And given this change, businesses can benefit from automation technologies, including RPA. Uh, they can certainly increase their capacity in their organizations using uh, RPA bots and other technologies. Uh, they can significantly ex improve uh, their customer experience, for example, uh, using conversational AI, along with RPA, along with other automation technologies. Uh, they can use automation to gather insights you know, from the process data, which, uh, which can help them improve their customer journeys, leading to increased customer loyalty and satisfaction. I think those are some of the ways that automation in general can help organizations, particularly in a post uh, pandemic world. I think there are also greater contributions of automation to society in, in general, right? Um, I think automation gives us a gift and a choice. Uh, the gift is that of time. Time is freed up from the way work is being done today. And the choice is really ours. It's what do we do with that time? I think that relates back to what you were talking about at the very beginning of some of the fear that's associated with all of this as well. It's not a bad thing to get time back and choose as a society whether, you know, our work-life balance changes or priorities in terms of what our human employees are doing during the day shifts. I think that's all a really, really wonderful thing. And we can focus on the positive side of it and continue to drive our, our, our industries and across the board forward um, with this technology rather than being fearful of what comes from it. Absolutely agree. Well, I appreciate you joining me and going through the questions that we had submitted um, from the group on LinkedIn. Anybody that's interested, as Shale mentioned, he's got his paper linked on LinkedIn. So make your way over there to gather more information um, or reach out to either one of us with any questions. But thank you again for joining me today and have a wonderful day, everybody. Emma, thank you for this opportunity and keep doing what you're doing. It's fantastic. Thank you.